thank you, Tom, and thank you, Bill, for taking us through the rest of the afternoon. And because of you, we're able to provide the after-school and out-of-time care that our children need each and every day. We just want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting the Boys and Girls Clubs of Broward County. Thank you all so much, and give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. This is a Thomas Flyer. 1910 Thomas Flyer flyabout. So tell me a little bit about this car. So the history of Thomas Flyer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an important was, announcement. In 1908, with us on the podium. Thomas entered the Round the World race judge, okay? to prove they had the strongest, most reliable car in the world. And prior to that time, these cars sold for $4,000. They won the Round the World race. Come to the podium. They decided they could then build the most expensive car in the world. They put every possible accessory on the car, dual horns, dual ignition, dual everything, raised the price to $6,300. Was the new price well, that was a lot of cars. money back then, that too. That was the most expensive car in the world. Yeah. And they said, if you can't afford to buy it, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about the mechanics of this car. It's absolutely gorgeous. So it's a six-cylinder, 740 cubic inch, 90 horsepower engine. Now, that doesn't mean much by today's standards, but this car will go 100 miles an hour. Wow. And back there in the, that time, on those roads. As fast as anybody dared. That, was, uh, that would be pretty scary. Yeah. Like, we're looking at, like, these headlamps here, and then, you know, I mean, absolutely gorgeous. These would have been gas. Acetylene. Acetylene. So an acetylene gener generator is a container that mixes coal and water and creates acetylene gas, which is ideal because it, acetylene burns very white. It's a very white hot flame. And the side lights are a combination. They were the first electrified lights ever put on a car, but they also run on kerosene or electric. So basically, when you were driving this car, you had backups on everything. Now, this little detail right in here. So that's, that's measuring oil. Oil flow. Okay. So the oil flow system is yeah. a pressurized system in the crankcase. When the engine's running, that will come up and show the level. And if you need more oil, you pump that. It pumps into this tank, which see has all these copper lines, and they will lubricate every part of the engine just by pushing the button. Stephen Bruno. So there's a lot of hand work to driving these cars. The dash, the big dial, with lots of information on it. What's, what is that? That's what's called. The Jones car, this particular car it's the is first Fiat, GPS. Which is <laughs> it's driven off a small gear on the front axle, drives a cable, with a and the dial body. turns around particular and it tells you where to turn based on which chart you put in. If you look at the chart that's in there closely right now, it says Philadelphia at City Hall to New York at Columbus Circle. And as you drive along, that gear turns around and it will say, turn right under the the uh, red covered bridge. <laughs> then go to the new barn and turn left. Lay out all those routes. Yeah. So they had people all over the East Coast updating these charts. So it's like the, like the Google Maps guys going around today. They were going around right taking notes. That accessory in 1910 was $600. Now in 1910 a Model T was $400. <laughs> the ignition system is unique. Now this is a six cylinder engine. So real quick, how many spark plugs do you see? Most of us know him as a Mercedes-Benz collector. A lot more than six. But he happened to secure this car. This particular car was designed and built for the late hour of use. You start the car on a distributor, which drives off a battery, so there's always electricity. That's the six spark plugs on the side. Then, when you get up to speed, you switch it to a twin spark magneto. Which was one of the in-house designs at Bingham. Much appreciated. How does it run? as we pass modern cars. It'll go 100 miles an hour. Wow. It's really quite powerful. The American Early from 1930.
30 best in class. A 1910 Thomas Flyer A670, owned by James Grundy of Horsham, Pennsylvania. So this is what you would call, for lack of any uh, choice, 